Audi, Imar Talim here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Osamu Tezuka story, a life in manga and anime. Now, of course, if you are familiar with me, you will know that I'm a huge fan of Osamu Tezuka. And when I heard that there was going to be an English language release of his biography uh, written by Toshio Ban, I was absolutely incredibly excited to be able to read it, to be able to learn more about this man that I admire, to see his impact not just on the medium of manga but also on the medium of anime. And so of course the question is, as always, is the Osama Tezuka story any good? And that's what I'm going to be discussing today. So let's get started. So what is the story of the Osama Tezuka story? The Osama Tezuka story covers the life of Osama Tezuka. It is split up into three sections, with the first section covering his childhood and looking at the many things that would inspire and influence his works, uh, things such as his love for pre-war manga, his admiration of the Takarazuka Review, his love for the films that his father would bring home to him, many of which were international and animated, and of course the impact that the Second World War had on him, from suffering from malnutrition uh, because of the rationing, from seeing his father called off to war, and seeing suffering on the streets as the Allies air raided Japan. The second section looks at his entry into the world of professional manga, and the impact that he would have on the industry, uh, in particular the fact that he introduced a very cinematic style to his manga, with things such as camera pans, uh, such as zoom-ins and zoom-outs, etc, etc. Many people at the time compared reading his work to watching a movie, and this understandably made him very, very popular. But we also get to see how different the manga industry was at the time. For instance, a lot of the manga made at the time was made for these manga rental shops, uh, which was printed on cheap paper and actually had people copy over the mangaka's work in order to be able to make multiple copies of it. As you can imagine, that is quite fascinating. And then the third section is his impact on anime, while also still touching on his work in the field of manga. Osamu Tezuka set up Mushi Production in the early 1960s and went on to create Astro Boy, which was a groundbreaking animated series for Japan, introducing many of the production techniques and the visual imagery that would come to be associated with the modern anime industry. At the same time, it actually covers Osamu Tezuka's passion for making experimental animation. And this was something that I was relatively unfamiliar with prior to reading this book. Um, so I found that absolutely fascinating. And while all that is happening, um, a very nice touch, I think, from Toshioban, and this very much reminds me of something that Shigeru Mizuki did for his Showa series, is that Toshioban uh, took one of Osamu Tezuka's most beloved characters, Junshakuban, uh, also known as Mr. Mustachio, for those of you familiar with the English dub of Astro Boy, and has him uh, deliver exposition at key points in the story, uh, which I think is a very pleasant, enjoyable way to do it. And in general, I have to say that I'm very pleased with this biography. There's a ton of information in here, and it's told in a very enjoyable manner. Returning back to the way that Toshiban uses Shinsakuban, he expertly knows when to let the story speak for itself, and when we need a bit more explanation and to have Shunsakuban come in and explain a bit about the manga industry at the time, certain things, you know, Sam Tezuka's childhood, etc, etc. And while I was quite familiar with a lot of the aspects of Sam Tezuka's childhood and Sam Tezuka's manga career, I was actually really, really surprised at how much information that I didn't know about Sam Tezuka in his anime career. And we get a lot of detail about a lot of the production techniques that they do. In particular, a scene that really stood out to me in this manga uh, was during the production of Phoenix 2772, and a particular shot in it in which a camera pans over the car and requires the entire environment to be animated. It required an intense amount of work in order to be able to pull that off. And I found that really, really fascinating. However, for as much as I can praise this biography for being informative, for being entertaining to read, I do have a criticism of this manga, and it is a pretty substantial one, I would say. And that is that I feel that Toshioban likes to linger on Osamu Tezuka's achievements and less so on his failures. To take a certain example from this manga, uh, in the early 1970s was a particularly dark time for Osamu Tezuka. His company Mushi Production had fallen. A co-worker of him had filed the copyright for Triton of the Sea under his own name rather than Osamu Tezuka's, and Osamu Tezuka was plagued with debt collectors. However, we hardly see any of that inside the manga itself. And by the time that Mushi Production declares bankruptcy, uh, even though I knew that Mushi Production would go bankrupt in 1973, 
It still took me by surprise because while I was reading this, there wasn't really much indication that Mushi Production was losing money and going under. So I did find that a little bit disappointing. But as much as I found those disappointing, I still cannot get over the fact that there was so much information in this book, much of which, even as an Osama Tezuka fan, I was unaware of. And I think that Toshio Ban overall has done a really good job of bringing Osama Tezuka's life to life. But with regards to the artwork, now the artwork here is a little unusual. Now I think it's important to note that Toshio Ban was an assistant for Osama Tezuka for many, many years. And so of course, when we take a look at the artwork, it does have a very Tezuka-esque look to it. However, it is also quite distinct, I think. In particular, the thing that really stood out to me was the faces. Uh, the faces themselves had a very distinct look from Osama Tezuka's work. And for a while, I actually found that a little jarring. It almost gave me a bit of an uncanny valley effect. I'm looking at the artwork and I'm thinking, this looks like Osama Tezuka's artwork, but it isn't Osama Tezuka's artwork. But over time, I gradually grew to enjoy this artwork. It has a wonderfully cartoony style to the actual characters themselves, while at the same time having very detailed backgrounds similar to Osama Tezuka's work. So from that perspective, I actually quite like the art style in here. Another very nice touch in this is the inclusion of some panels from Osama Tezuka's work. As we're working through his life, we see some panels from the manga that he's working on at the time. And I think that this is a really nice touch to be able to show us the growth in Osama Tezuka's own artwork over the course of his career. However, I do have a bit of a criticism with regards to the artwork, and that is the inclusion of some shots from movies or TV series. Um, a particular example I would like to give was when Osama Tezuka saw Momotaro Sacred Sailors, which was Japan's first feature-length anime film. And Osama Tezuka watched the movie and it had quite an impact on him. And in order to convey that impact, we actually see a few shots from the film included in this manga. However, the shots from these films have quite a washed out look to it, almost blurry looking, and I just found it a bit jarring. So while I do like the artwork overall, and I gradually came to really adore the art style, uh, I do think that there must have been a better way to be able to include those shots from those films in a way that didn't contrast so much with the rest of the manga. Now with regards to how this was released, so this was released by Stonebridge Press. And if you compare it to my trusty Yatsuba, you will see that it is a much bigger size than your standard Tankaban, which is great. The paper quality itself is quite lovely, with some very nice contrast between the black and white artwork. However, a criticism that I do have with the presentation of this manga is in the translation. While I think that in general Frederick L. Schott does a fantastic job of making the story flow, of giving us the information that we need, etc, etc, one problem that I do have is that there are an unusual amount of typos, not a ton of them, but enough that it did impact my enjoyment of this manga. So I did find that a bit jarring. However, beyond that, Frederick L. Schott gives us a very nice foreword in which he gives us a lot of information about the Osama Tezuka story itself, about Toshio Ban, about the way that this manga was released, and even includes a section of the manga in which he himself appears, since he was Osama Tezuka's interpreter. So that's a very nice inclusion. But probably one of my favorite extras in any manga has to be in this book, and that is an appendices of Osama Tezuka's work. Uh, covering both his work in manga and his work in anime, uh, this appendices has an astounding amount of information. You will notice that the manga section uh, is broken down into years. It shows us the Japanese title of the manga, uh, shows us the English title, if there was one available, shows us the date it was released, which magazine it was released in. There's an insane amount of information here. And then when we get to the anime section, uh, again, it is broken down by year. It gives us the Japanese title, the English title, if it's available, the number of episodes, what channel it aired on, and even whether or not it was in black and white or color. So the amount of information in this appendices is huge. I've gone to this appendices many times uh, in order to be able to identify a work when it was released, to be able to order it in my collection, etc, etc. I just think it's one of the best extras I've ever seen in a manga. So I have to give huge props for that. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Osama Tezuka story? As an Osama Tezuka fan, this had a lot of information that I really, really enjoyed. And it's told in a very pleasant way 
uh, with some very nice exposition delivered by Shunsakuban, with some very pleasant artwork. And even though it doesn't cover as much as I would like to have seen, such as his failures, I still think it is an absolute must read if you're a fan of Osam Tezuka, if you are a fan of anime and manga and you want to be able to see the origins of these industries. I think it is absolutely great work and I would definitely highly recommend it. So that was my thoughts on the Osam Tezuka story, A Life in Manga and Anime. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know your own thoughts on the Osam Tezuka story, A Life in Manga and Anime. Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? What are your thoughts on Osam Tezuka himself? Do you agree with me that you would have liked to have seen more of Osam Tezuka's failures included in this manga? What are your thoughts on the way it was released? Do you agree with me that the appendices is absolutely brilliant? And of course, if you have any information about Osam Tezuka, about Toshioban, about Frederick L. Schott, about anything, please leave that in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support the channel, I would encourage you to use my Amazon and Write Stuff affiliate links in the description below. When you purchase an anime or manga through those affiliate links, not only are you supporting me, not only are you supporting the channel, but you're also supporting the anime and manga industry. So I would highly encourage you to purchase your anime and manga through those affiliate links. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.